Um, this is quickly a post as well. Another one to say, get well soon. I just learned this recently, having listened to this podcast featuring Tremaine Emery, who is now the creative director of Supreme and also has his own brand called Denim Tears and um, was a close friend of Virgil's back in the day, RIP the GOAT. And he sat down with his podcast called Started From The Bottom with uh, Justin Richmond. And he actually spoke about his um, health issues, which I wasn't familiar with because, again, I've not really been on, you know, IG that much anymore. Um, I don't really follow the guy on social media, so I don't really know too tough. But from the last time that I checked, um, the, the last time I watched a lecture of Tremaine Emery, I think he gave at the Harvard um, School of Design, the same place that Virgil did that iconic um, lecture where he had the flipping Nike 10 collaboration shoes and he was signing everybody's flipping shoes and whatnot and just give the, the best flipping, you know, the best speech ever in terms of design and his practice and his inspirations, whatnot, and where he's at in life. Um, he did, Tremaine Emery, did, Tremaine Emery, sorry, did, did the same lecture at the same place, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And he spoke about, you know, his journey and what he did, what not, and how he, can, how he came up. And, I, and don't get me wrong, the footage is horrible. Somebody recorded it, I guess on their phone, screen recorded it and then uploaded it somewhere and it just looked horrible and the sound is terrible. I had to bump up the sound on a clip I'm going to play later. But I did remember having seen the, the video, just a small bit of it, and he's sitting down kind of giving a lecture. I was like, oh, he looks really skinny. He lost a lot of weight. But then his legs looked really skinny. And I was like, oh, I'm not too sure. You know, and these days, especially after the whole thing that happened with, um, I forgot his name, but the guy from uh, Black Panther, sorry. I forgot the actor, RIP to you. Um, no disrespect intended. But after that whole occasion, I think myself and I guess everybody on the internet kind of learned a lesson about, you know, being kind of kind to people and not always running to conclusions and whatever it may be. And the instant fall, I thought, I was like, oh shit, I hope he's okay. You know, if it's if it's weight loss, normal, you know, the conventional way to get healthy, fair enough. But if it's anything to do with like health issues that have made him get so skinny, it was quite concerning because, you know, that Tremaine guy is a big dude. Um, I think six foot plus, whatever it may be, kind of like, you know, he carries himself well. So to see him kind of that thin, when he was giving them um, the lecture, it was kind of disconcerting, especially when you think about Virgil and how that ended and whatnot. RIP to him. And he actually gave an update, courtesy of this podcast, talking about his health health issues. And um, yeah, man, it, it, he, like he had legit health issues. So that might explain why he, he looks so skinny on the Harvard um, school thing that he kind of given. And maybe why I haven't also seen many style pictures of him outside and about, I guess he's been recovering at home and stuff and doing what it needs to be done. But it's still kind of credit to him because you still see kind of collections of denim tears drop in collaborations supreme stuff is still popping so yeah i mean this guy has probably been working from his hospital bed which is pretty wild but this is a clip i'm going to play um from the latest episode of Start from the bottom podcast i'm going to put it up here on the screen so you can see it it's this podcast here definitely check it out and i think it's the first four minutes or so let's quickly play the clip and see what they say boom 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 it goes playing now bear me a second as it comes up Are you playing? Hey everyone, yeah, get ready to yeah, speak the adverts. Focusing on and looking back at the paths to support. Come on, no adverts. Listen, wherever no you adverts. Over Come the on. years, this when 2018 became artistic director yeah, of Louis Vuitton, beyond the actual street, Vuitton, and what, which interviewing him with a like the loss of his best friend. Here we go. And um, I'm recovering. Yeah, What's your day to day like these days, man? Just chilling. Um. I'm recovering, so I had a, uh, I had an aneurysm, I had a lower aortic aneurysm, and um, I'm recovering. You know, eight out of ten people pass from having it, so I was fortunate enough to survive it. Went in the hospital in October, and um, end of December, right before New Year's, got out. So, been spending most of my time recovering, um, doing physical therapy because the aneurysm, the lower aortic aneurysm really, it messed up my legs. So I'm just building up muscle in my legs and waiting on some nerves to wake up. So, yeah. But my health is great. I'm actually healthier than probably I've been in a long time. Um, I had a lot of, had and have a lot of support from people in my life. And yeah, I'm good. I mean, I imagine this sort of slowdown, like this sort of taking, you know, sort of recovery time is probably the first time in a while that you've really slowed down, right? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. It's been interesting because it's like, also since I'm, I'm in New York, so I hadn't lived in New York in 13 years. Um, I've been on, you know, was living in London since 2010 for seven years. 
and then moved to LA and then moved to New York in 2022, February. And my first day at Supreme was on Valentine's Day, February 14th. It's been the first time I've just been like, not on an airplane every week or like on a train, you know, trains, planes, automobiles, yeah. you know, so it's been good. A lot of it, part of it was just like, my, when I was in the hospital, my focus was just getting out the hospital, surviving, doing what I could to um, listen to the doctors. And it's interesting when you get that sick, when you're like on the verge of death, which was like a couple of times whilst I was in the hospital, it's, you know, willpower definitely, you gotta wanna be here. That plays a part of it. So I, wanna, I, wanted, I wanted to be here. Um, so not just being grateful for surviving because in the end we all die. So you survive something, but it's only extending, you know? It's temporary, so yeah. my, it's my focus has been on the five W's. So um, who, what, when, where, why, you know? And it's like, well, why, you know, why and what do I want to do? Yeah. But again, before I, I got sick, I always kind of lived my life like that. Cause that's how my parents raised me. So this life is finite. So we got to have fun. We got to be good to each other. We got to love each other. We got to have fun. My dad's yeah. like, have fun, you know, and do the things you want to do. So I always, I always been on that wave. I didn't, I got maybe perspective on far as things as like myself having a family. I don't have one yet. I don't have any kids and stuff on that more even, but even that I had that perspective of wanting that and wanting to find the right person to, to build a family with. But as far as like living it to the limit, I did that already, you know? Yeah. Maybe to maybe to my detriment. <laughs> maybe too much. Maybe yeah, too much. You know? I mean, just even thinking too, like. So yeah, big up Tremaine. Um, it sounds like he's on the mend and on the other side of things, but damn, man, an aneurysm. Especially, it's by the sounds of it, it sounds like it happened around the same time that Virgil passed. So you can only imagine how scary that must have felt. Um, you know, on the back of one of his best friends and close collaborators passing away, um, in such tragic circumstances, and then suddenly you're having a health, you know, scare as well. Um, it could be super, super scary. But um, I did like what you said about hospitals and wanting to get out of the hospital too was just the first thing on his list. Not anything crazy. Not running a marathon. Not changing your lifestyle. Not eating habits and whatnot. Just getting out of the hospital and surviving. And I think I had a similar feeling when I had to go hospital at all for um an issue i had with my um with my throat i had these really inflamed kind of glands in my throat that I'm, I'm, I'm making me unable to swallow and i couldn't spit i couldn't even spit probably was hurting that much everything was hurting i couldn't drink water it was absolutely like awful and i remember like suffering and being in cold sweats and having a fever at home but then as soon as i got to the hospital you feel a real level of flipping ease and you feel somewhat chilled because you you know that you're going to get the help that you need but then once you get the help that you need you also start getting worried and scared that you're going to have to spend longer in here than you need to because you look around you and i think that for the first thing that happens especially with me it kind of humbles you and kind of um reminds you that you don't really have it as bad as other people because when you're at home and you're going crazy and you're in this loop and you're in a fever and you have this ailment and you're not sure it's going to get any better you just want you just want yourself to get better you just want everything to be centered around you someone has to make me feel good for me feel good then you suddenly go to hospital and you see some little kid with their head split open you see a guy with his foot that looks like he's hanging off you see another woman with something hanging off their face and you're like rah these people are like suffering way more than i am and here I am complaining about all my issues, but that isn't that, you know, that deep of a problem. I kind of need to put my issues into perspective and kind of, you know, kind of um, see it from other people's point of view and know that, you know, sooner rather than later, I'll be, I'll be good after a while. But there's no doubting that you go in hospitals and you, see, and you also see people on the other side of things where you can see them and they look like they touch and go. You can just see it in people's eyes and it's something that you can't describe probably. It's something that you can't probably really kind of reenact, but we can all recognize it in people, in just their demeanor, in their eyes, in the color of their skin. You can just tell somebody's like on the brink of leaving us and it can get really scary and can kind of make you feel really frightened and stuff. But I think it's good to see that sometimes from time to time to remind you of just how temporary and kind of finite life is and to, like Tremaine said to kind of live it um, as best as you can to definitely definitely live it as best as you can and take your health seriously as somebody else mentioned in the chat um, health definitely is wealth ludicrously health definitely is wealth and for sure with these guys more so 
with these cool dudes and these guys who are like at the peak and the kind of antithesis of culture and streetwear and stuff and i've been around that scene a lot and i know how people are clout demons and they want to get next to you because you're the cool guy i can only imagine how much or how weird it's got for Tremaine over the years, especially now since P Virgil's passed, like with the whole Supreme job and how Denim Tears has popped off. You go from being this guy in the scene that's known and then suddenly you are kind of got a position and you've got clout and people are now coming to you. I think I remember hearing a, a clip from um, the girl Brenda Hashtag on Twitter saying the same thing. I think she was on um, Throwing Fits and she was, I think they asked her a question about, I don't know, something about the industry. And she says something quite flipping and quite straight because obviously she's flipping um, uh, German and she doesn't really mince her words. And she was like, oh, I don't need to like... No, I think they're also about going out. I think Brenda Hashtag in Eclipse is something like, oh, I don't do drugs, I don't drink. So I usually go home by 10 p.m. So I miss out on the socialize, socializing part of fashion industry where all the deals are made in clubs and bars and after hours and hotel lobbies and stuff because people are always out and they're nocturnal animals. But she doesn't drink and doesn't, you know, she doesn't... Um, do drug stuff so she's on by 10 but she said the reason that she could take that you know she could also be happy with it and not feel like she's missing out is because now i think recently she got named the fashion director of zero three two c the iconic sort of fashion and cultural magazine out there from berlin uh big up um york who kind of runs that shit i think his name york has from back in the day who used to do that doesn't matter it doesn't matter um she's now the f fashion director over there at that magazine and she said because of that role that she's got people now come up to her licking her ass so it kind of changes the need to be out in these nightclubs socializing with fashion people because now you're the prize quote as to quote dj academics you're the one people want and i guess with tremaine it must be the same thing but it must be a bit of a mind fuck for those guys because you know everyone wants to be your friend because you're the supreme director supreme creative director sorry everyone wants to be your friend because you've got this amazing brand denim tears that's doing bits and you're culturally irrelevant and you're you in cool places and doing cool interviews and doing shows and blah blah blah, blah. but then when you get sick is when you realize who your actual friends are because number one with me personally i'm extremely you know i say private in that respect and i don't like telling people my business i kind of just deal with myself on my own i think most people that kind of listen to my content will know you know i'm i'm, I'm the kind of person that's going to you know be uh, laughing at people who decide to turn on their phone and start crying into their camera and shit i could never be that guy so i kind of keep myself to myself in that regard but but i do know when you are sick the people that you call or that you depend on are the people that you really kind of count as your friends and your family and people that are really close to you so i can only imagine for those guys who are infinitely infinitely way more popular than i am right and clouded up and shit just imagine how brutal that must be of a mindfuck of seeing the, the level of people who are hitting you up for supreme um you know d fucking discounts for supreme information for gifting for denim tears whatever they're hitting you up for and then kind of marry up to the amount of people that are hitting you up and and kind of wanting to be your support and that system for you when you're in hospital wanting to get you something to eat wanting to whatever whatever it may be it's probably pales in comparison so that is definitely something that you definitely get a wake-up call when you do get ill it's sad that it has to happen when you're ill but it is nice to kind of get that information okay cool these are the people i can count on these people are here just because of my position this is a real friend this isn't a real friend this is a family member i can count all that sort of stuff is really important to know as you kind of progress through life but anyway long story short um get well soon um tremaine emery wishing you all the best and health and whatnot the culture needs your brother the culture needs you